I'm Ron Johnson of RJ's Farm. Thanks for tuning in. This here is Zippy. Zippy here is looking for a, a new home. He's uh, owned by Bagaduce River Equine Rescue and uh, he's been with us here now three months, four months. Um, <clears throat> we have recently discovered he's got uh, navicula so uh, we don't want to try to make him a riding horse um, but we want to make him useful. And so I've been working with him um, in hand and at Liberty and I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a video on um, you know some of this uh, Tai Chi horsemanship principles and how I use them in my lead work and in my Liberty work and um, Zippy here's a good one because he's getting good at it but he's still kind of quirky um, so uh, I figured why not do a video this will be good I can get this video over for, for, for Kelly over at um, Bagaduce River Equine Rescue to show what Zippy is learning and um, also uh, if anybody who is interested in him sees this video or, or hears about Zippy and they want to come and be a part of his learning um, I welcome you there uh, he's gonna need a, a, a certain somebody somebody who understands energy and movement um, you know somebody who's not gonna be uh, I guess I'm gonna say selfish uh, not that he can't become a riding horse I just think it would be selfish to make him a riding horse where he's got navicula um, and he's also gonna need somebody who's gonna be able to maintain his feet uh, I am filing him weekly um, he can go two weeks he can probably go three weeks um, but he wears heavy on the outside on the backs and the insides tend to grow long and so I notice when he starts limping um, it once I file him back to flush on the sole the limping stops so <clears throat> that is something that needs to be maintained you know ideally weekly um, but no more than three weeks out um, so anyways all that being said uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna get to some of the stuff I've been working on with him and uh, you know in the beginning um, he was always friendly I mean he's, he's, he's awesome with people um, especially young girls my stepson's 10 year old daughter comes and she walks in the pen and he ends up right there with her and follows her around and you know he's just the sweetest thing um, but he is quirky uh, there are certain things that and he reverts back every now and then you know uh, for a while there you couldn't touch his ear at all you know now I can um, he gets still a little weird when I try to go in the air um, but if I take my time he, he does allow it um, but before you know putting a bridle on like that would have would not have happened you know now now he's okay with it he kind of he'll bend in um, handling his back feet he was good for picking but to stay any longer than that for trimming wasn't that bad but filing him weekly has really helped with that he's uh, he's standing much better for that um, still wants to take his feet away after a certain amount of time or you know if the file catches and his foot twists um, he'll want to pull away then too um, but no big deal he's very compliant very friendly um, so let's get on with the with the, the main part of the video um, so I like to you know start loose typically um, but I don't want to go through the whole process so I'm gonna skip the start start where he, where he would be loose to get his attention uh, for a couple reasons one the camera is fixed to the fence and we may end up going out of out of sight um, so I work on getting his attention just acknowledgement and so to get the acknowledgement every energy I put on him is gonna draw from his face and put energy into somewhere on the back side of his body somewhere between the middle of the ribs to the hip generally in the beginning it's gonna be all hip um, but as we start fine-tuning it we're gonna start working it into the rib cage uh, and then we can start moving forward of the center line of the rib cage and, and start working on 
toggling that little bit of push back to a draw. Um, but none of this works without his attention. You need mental engagement. He needs to focus. He needs to um, be a part of it. And, it. and if he's not thinking with me, then he's thinking against me. And like right now, somebody's doing some construction a little further away. I don't know if you hear it in the camera, but um, he's hearing the hammers and uh, you know, he's interested in it. So um, in order to get his attention, I'm gonna put draw on his face. If that doesn't do it, I'm gonna put more energy into the hip. And so right here, he's stiff, resistance. I just wanna keep putting that there. Um, so I just want to keep going until I see that resistance let go. Um, and so, you know, that, the beginning part when he would be loose, I'd let him do whatever he wants and I'd just walk around until I recognize, you know, where am I when he tries to glance at me? Does he do it out of the back of his eye or does he actually turn and look at me? I want to get all that information first. Um, and then I may start putting an energy into him to see if I can affect him. How does he receive that energy? Does he go forward? So for instance, if I'm here and I walk into his hip, what, do, what does he do? Okay, he turned around, right? That's what we want. Uh, in the beginning though, they may go out, you know, especially a horse that's been round penned in the typical way. I'm only in a round pen here so that I can do my thing for the camera. I prefer to do this in a wide open space. I don't like the fences as a boundary. I want him to be able to do whatever he wants. And so, um, again, I'm gonna draw, doesn't work, I'm gonna push. So the draw has to work and so, what do I got going on right now? Nothing. So I'm going to push and draw. Okay? So I'll come to this side. I'm going to draw. Good. This side worked. Immediately put me in the left eye. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to get in the right eye. And I'm going to draw. Hind end moves, but he takes a while to come with his front feet. Right? I'm just saying these things. Not that they... They do matter, but I'm saying them so that you as a viewer will be a little bit more aware of things that are happening. Um, they do matter, and I do want better. I'm not going to demand better. I'm going to keep applying the energy that is necessary and then reward when he finally gives it to me. I don't, <clears throat> the only thing I demand is respect. If he's trying to crash into me, I'm gonna demand that he stays away. If he's trying to bite me, I'm gonna demand that he stays away. If he's trying to kick me, then I'm gonna demand that he runs a few laps for a little while. <clears throat> but other than that, it's all in his time. Um, so, I draw, I got nothing, push. And again, it was slow, he was stiff. So I'm gonna come in a little tighter into the rib cage and try to soften him up a little bit more. And so he looks pretty good, but he's just a little stiff. And he's walking a certain, there, that's better. Finally, the hind end moved. And maybe it was because I moved my hand, I don't know. Um, but. I was looking for a little more hind end response. Now he overbid it, but he finally moved it. So I'm gonna come in again and I'm gonna push on that hip. Yeah, that's much more what I want. Now when I when I toggle, I can come up here where I'm pushing on the girth line in the face to the flank in the hip to the neck and the shoulder, back to the flank and the hip. Now I can switch sides, push on the face and the shoulder, draw on the nose, 
push on the hip, right? And so the, the movements, um, some of these movements here did not fully resemble Tai Chi movements. Um, but when they're doing really good, it starts to resemble some of the Tai Chi movements. Um, but, you know, I've kind of created new movements that refer to my conversation. So when the energy goes out, and because he's on that side of the camera, I guess I'll turn him that way. You know, I'll start with my rope either hanging like this or hanging like this, depending on the stage. Um, he's at the stage where I can kind of do this, right? And so if I need him to go, I ask him to follow the hand, push the shoulder. So he's, he's refusing to go forward, so I gotta sweep forward, sweep forward, sweep forward. He's having a hard time, so I might pick this up and say, come on, come on. And when he finally gets going, I'll put it back on the ground and talk to him in these movements, okay? And so I'm gonna use sort of a Tai Chi block here to change direction. And I'm just sweeping him forward. You may notice my left foot and my left hand and my left shoulder and my left hip are all working together. And my right is kind of just giving that guiding energy I don't know if you can see it, but here, I'm just, my right is kind of helping the forward move. Okay. And when it's time to stop, I just turn everything to here, ask him to connect to my left hand, guide him out with my left, sweep him out with my right. Now I had to step over that rope, but typically I want to step with my right leg. <clears throat> if I didn't have a rope in my way. Okay. Here, yeah, we connect. Push on that hip. Draw that nose. Sweep that shoulder. Draw that nose. Push that hip. Connect with the left. Draw that nose. Sweep that shoulder. Okay, so we got a little stuck, so I had to take another step. Okay. And then, when it's working like this, we can, we know we can kind of take him off the halter and lead and get a little something. Um, he still does try to go to the outside edge. Um, I'm a firm believer in um, when round penning is inappropriate, it sticks with them for a long time. Um, not to say that some of these round penning techniques are bad. Um, but I think people overuse them. They're meant to be used in the beginning of something and then to be continued beyond basic free lunging, changing directions. Everybody tends to use them. Oh, I'm gonna ride my horse today. Let's go free lunge him in the round pen for a little while, get some of that excess energy off. That kind of messes up the horse's ability to understand subtle energy because every time the start of everything is let's go, 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 stop, turn, go, 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 stop, turn, go, go, go. So there's no in between as to move out. Move out. All right, so he's lost. Move out. go forward. Now slow down. Turn towards me. Back up. Whoop. Back up. Step over with your front. Sideways now. Forwards now. I don't know if you got all that, if I got out of the camera or not, but you know, those subtleties I'm a big believer in getting that first before I turn them loose and do any round pen stuff. So that way, when I'm asking them to go, I can ask them to come back in two ways. One, I can step out and draw the eye, which is a common round penning method. But the one I prefer 
is to go, if the horse is going this way, I go this way, push on the hip and get him to circle back around on me. And the reason I prefer that way is if I'm not in a round pen, sometimes I don't have the option to step out in front and draw. If they're running away from me on a big open field, all I have is the ability to push on that hind end because I'm behind them. So I believe it's pretty important to be able to get behind a horse, give it a shove and turn them around from the hind. Um, so I start developing that right away, um, even before I start running a horse in a circle. Um, anyways, I don't want this video to be too long. I just wanted to put in the basics. Um, but, um, you know, Zippy here, he's, he's doing really well and, and um, doing decent in the Liberty. Uh, I'd turn him loose if I had a cameraman, but I'm pretty sure we're going to end up outside the camera view. But yeah, he's doing really well. And um, I think, you know, if somebody is into, you know, maybe somebody loves horses, um, they don't want to just have a horse. Um, they don't care to ride, but they want a horse that they can hang out with and do stuff with. He's that horse. You can do a lot with him and he's fun because he enjoys it. Sometimes he gets a little nervous and uh, you probably saw a couple of avoidances. And you know, one time I went up to pet him and. He, he moved his head really quick. Um, you know, I, I don't know what's happened to him in his past. Um, I've only met one of his previous owners, and um, I know what Bagadoos River, well, I don't know all of what Bagadoos River Rescue knows. Um, maybe I do. Maybe they did tell me, but top of my head, I don't have that information. Um, so I don't know, you know, was he ear twitched because he was so difficult? Who knows that would explain why his right ear is such a nuisance when you're trying to do certain things um, but again he's he, he, he's so much better with it you know uh, you know it's just when you try to go in and I'll, I'll put my thumb in just so you can kind of see what what I mean oh, we didn't have an action I'm rubbing yeah there you go so I'm gonna get him back so he says I don't think so so I'm gonna choke up on my rope a little bit and I'm gonna just reach up I'm going to say, hey, can I have it? I'm going to put my thumb in. He came to me. I took it out. Put my thumb in. He stayed with me. But he's flinching, so I'm just going to go in and out. I'm just touching, releasing. Touching, releasing. Touching, releasing. Touching, releasing. Touching, releasing. So he, he was good there, so I'm going to pull. He come away. Now I'm going to grab it. I'm going to touch, release, touch, release, touch, release. So you can see he's still a little concerned about it, you know, but he's getting better. He's, he's trusting me because I'm listening to him and I'm responding to him, letting him know, I hear you. I know how you feel. I know what you think and it matters to me. Um, I don't think he got that before. Maybe he did. Uh, but most people don't know. They know the basic body languages, you know, when the eyes are hard or the ears are laid back or, you know, tipping of the head and you know popping of the shoulder you know they can read that kind of stuff but um you know the the when there's just a little bit of tension or the pole's just slightly out or the eye is kind of concerned but yet they're still doing everything that they're supposed to be doing and it looks pretty good to the to the average eye um you know the those subtleties aren't usually picked up by people um and so that is my main focus to learn that, to teach that, you know, to let the horse know he's heard and to let people know that they can do better in how they hear their horse and how they can speak to their horse. Um, so I'm going to end on that note and um, thank you all for watching. And uh, again, if you're interested in Zippy, if you're interested in coming and learning with Zippy, um, this is something that I offer to all the owners and where he's a rescue. If you are potentially going to be his, his adopter and his forever home, um, then you can get uh, and take advantage of that free opportunity. I do not charge for people to be a part of a horse's training. Um, so if you may be interested in him, and you know, even if you're not, uh, I'll still welcome you because 
wherever he goes, it will only benefit him to have more and more people involved in his life. Um, so, you know, even if you say, well, geez, I don't know, I, I probably won't adopt him, but I'd like to take advantage of this opportunity. Do it. It's okay. I welcome you. Because if he needs a home, he needs the experience, he needs the interaction, it's all good. So, you know, and then you'll know more, and then you're a horse person, you may know somebody who might be interested, now you have more information to give. So, please, I welcome you. Um, again, thank you for watching, and uh, look forward to some more updates. I don't know when they'll come, this one's a long time in the making, but... Thank you again.